elbow is so itchy. <laughs> everybody it's your girl Jay and today I'm here with my January wrap-up for 2021 part 2 I read a total of 15 books this month so I've split my wrap-up into three different parts this is part 2 which means that it is the next five books that I've read for the month so if you're interested in part 1 it will be linked down below but without further ado let us get started <sighs> The first book I have to talk about for part two of the wrap-up is Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The book follows 17-year-old high school senior Maverick Carter who just found out that he is a father. He's been selling drugs on the side to help make ends meet, but now that he has a son, he needs to decide whether or not the risk is worth it, and it's like the story of that. The Hate You Give was one of my favorite books when it was released, and I absolutely loved Mav in that book so I was so excited to be able to see his character again in a new light. I personally think that he is such an amazing father right off the bat and it was so nice to see him in his teenage years especially with everything that he was going through. He had so many expectations being put on him and his fear of failure and just the worry that he wasn't going to live up to everybody's expectations was so genuinely written. I really like how this book showed the frustrations and hardship that being a parent has but also shows the joys that parenting can bring especially to a young father. I also just really liked being able to see character names from Thug that I recognize and being able to draw previous knowledge that we have from Thug about Maverick, his friends and his family, and how that all connects to what he teaches Star and the rest of his children in Thug. I also just think that Angie is such a talented writer in the sense that she can sprinkle little tidbits of information and wisdom throughout her stories without making it preachy or over the top in any way. I just think that this book is one that a lot of people will be able to see themselves in. Angie is just an autobi author for me at this point so I'm just very excited to see what she comes up with next and you know I'm gonna be reading it so. The next yeah. book I have is The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. I was very scared to pick this up. This is definitely one of the intimidating books that I had on my shelf. It's actually pretty hefty which I I did not expect picking it up. I just know that it's like a high fantasy kind of situation going on and I don't do well with those but everybody has been raving about this book so I really wanted to pick it up and I actually did really enjoy it. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. It follows Nari who is a healer by day and a con artist by night. She seems to have the ability to heal, so she is often called by the people of Karo to rid their family members of demons in ceremonies of song and dance. During one of these ceremonies, she accidentally calls upon a ancient warrior Dijin called Dara. Dara believes that Nari is a Shafit, which means that she is not wholly human. So Dara takes Nari on a journey in order to protect her from the Ifrit, who are like demon creatures, and they travel to Devabad, which is a city made of brass walls, hence City of Brass. So like I said, this book was very intimidating to me, and although I did enjoy it, I did have a hard time keeping track of all the characters and the plot line. And honestly, I think that's just because my brain is fried from school. There's just so much that you have to know about this world at the beginning of the book that I just became overwhelmed very quickly. At times, I was bored by the story. The book is like over 500 pages and I think that a lot of it could have been cut out of the book and still gotten the point across. Like there was a lot of traveling throughout the expanses of this world that, you know, we didn't really need described to us. And because of that, I think that the beginning was rather slow, so I wasn't really that invested in the book for a while, but it did pick up as the story progressed. I did really like the alternating perspectives between Ali and Nari. Ali is the prince of Devabond, and I think that his character was very interesting in the sense that he is battling with the loyalty to his brother and kingdom, but also is part of this rebellion taking place. I personally don't think that he needed a point of view 
every other chapter. I think that Nari should have been more of the focus rather than Ali, but I did enjoy his storyline nonetheless. I personally really liked Dara. I think that he was the most interesting character to me. I loved learning about his past and why he was the way that he was in this book. He's just such an asshole and it was just very entertaining to me. But I was not the biggest fan of Nari. I did like her in the beginning and I thought that she was a very strong character. But as the story progressed, she just kind of evolved into like this whiny brat that I had no interest in. <laughs> so that kind of sucked. Overall, it was difficult to get into, but I definitely think that if you are interested in the book, you should push through it because it is worth the read and it was very entertaining, so 4 out of 5 stars. The next book that I read was Words in Deep Blue by Kat Crothy and I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars. This follows Rachel who had a best friend named Henry who she was madly in love with, but he was in love with a girl named Amy. On the day that Rachel is moving away from their small town, she decides that she is going to leave a note for Henry proclaiming her love for him in his favorite book in his family's bookstore. But when Henry never mentions the letter, she is deeply hurt. But then her brother passes away and she finds herself in her hometown and she accepts a job at Howling Books, the secondhand bookstore that Henry's family owns. And uh, working alongside him starts to bring up old feelings. She needs to decide whether or not she is going to let him in again. And it's like the story of that. I think the biggest downfall of this book for me was the characters. I did not care about any of them. I thought that they were very boring and bland and one-dimensional. I really did not like Henry. I think that he was so oblivious to everything and everyone around him except for Amy, who treated him like absolute garbage, so I did not understand the infatuation. And then Rachel was just so rude and terrible to literally everyone and I understand that she is grieving the death of her brother but you can still be nice to people when you're grieving so I just could not vibe with her at all. The one character I could stand was George who is Henry's little sister. I think that if we had just followed her side story rather than Rachel and Henry I would have enjoyed the book a lot more. I think that her story was rather predictable and I was able to call who Prometheus, the person leaving the letters for her, was very early on in the book but her storyline was still cuter than Rachel and Henry's so I would have much preferred the book just being about her. I thought that the idea of the letter library where people could leave notes for each other in the books was a really cool concept, but unfortunately not cute or cool enough to get more than two stars out of me. So yeah, this was not the best book that I read this month. The next book I am super duper disappointed by. This is probably going to be on my most disappointing books of 2021 list, but it is Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. I honestly thought that I was really gonna love this and I just didn't. So this follows Nadia who is a cleric and she has the rare ability to talk to all the gods. So she is hidden in the mountains in a monastery to protect her gift from the rest of the world. When the monastery is attacked one day, Nadia flees with the help of her friend only to be hunted by the crown prince Seraphin. She meets a blood mage named Malachi who she must work together with and learn to trust in order to assassinate the Trinavian king in order to end a decade-long war and it's like the story of that. This book is so overhyped on booktube that I think it made me have such high expectations. This is like the same thing that happened to me with Illuminae. Everybody was reading it and everybody was giving it like such high ratings and then I read it and was like I don't understand why everybody loves this so much. This is more of like a mixed review book on Goodreads from what I can see. There's people who absolutely love it and people who absolutely despise it and there's not really an in-between. I think that I fell in between. It was very average to me. After reading this I honestly could not tell you half of the things that went on in this book. I think that the magic systems, both of them, were very interesting and I liked learning about what each one believed in and how they worked. One of the magic systems is blood magic, so I'm personally not somebody who gets 
triggered by self-harm but if you are somebody who does I would definitely recommend staying away from this book because there is a lot of it in this. I actually really like the dual point of view of this. I think that Seraphin was an interesting character. He is visually impaired out of his left eye and he was really great to be able to see the opposite viewpoint in regards to the war from Nadia because they're on different sides obviously. I think that Nadia was also intriguing. I really liked her ability to be able to talk to all of the gods and I loved her interactions with each of them because they were all so different and had different personalities that really came through in their banter. But I will say though that I think that she was a little bit boring and I just didn't really care what happened to her. I was like if she dies she dies, meh, you know? And that's not the best thing to think about a main character. My favorite character out of the three main characters was definitely Malachi. I think that he is such a complex character and I was just so invested in learning more about him. The biggest complaint that I have about this book was the romance. It did not make any sense to me whatsoever because the entire time Malachi is just not a good person and he constantly is revealing things to Nadia and she is constantly talking about how much she doesn't trust him and how he sucks and is terrible but then she's running back to him every two seconds being like, I love you. It just didn't make sense to me. I just wanted more from this and I was just disappointed because I thought it was going to be something that it wasn't. So I don't know if I just wasn't in the correct headspace at the time because I was doing a lot of school shit and you know school is stressful so I don't know if I just couldn't follow it because my brain was fried or what. So maybe I'll try rereading it sometime soon but yeah I was disappointed. Three out of five stars. And then the final book that I have for part two of the wrap-up is After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I actually really enjoyed this. I gave it a four out of five stars. It follows Lauren and Ryan who are having trouble in their marriage. So they decide that they are going to take a one-year break where they are going to have no contact with each other for that entire year. They also decide that they are free to see other people in the hopes that by the end of this one-year contract between the two of them that they will fall deep in love and be able to save their marriage. I think that the way that this story was told was really interesting. It's told through flashbacks, emails, and present day. It was really interesting to be able to see both of the characters' thoughts during their year-long break through the emails. I really liked how we were able to see both characters' thoughts during their break and how it affected both of them differently. I thought that this was just going to be strictly a romance book, which it's not. There's also a focus on familial relationships, which I really loved. I really loved Lauren's family. I think that they were great to read about. I really liked how supportive they were of Lauren and her decision in what she was doing with Ryan, but they were also very caring towards Ryan. And it wasn't like a little shit on Ryan year because he broke your heart. They were very caring towards him as well, which was really nice to see. I also really liked how everybody that Lauren interacted with had a different perspective on love and all of them were valid in their own way. Not everyone had to be in a relationship in order to be happy, which was really nice to see in a book. Overall, I think that this one was a lot of fun. It's definitely lighthearted. I thought it was going to be a little deeper than it was, but it was a good time nonetheless and I definitely recommend you check it out because it's, like I said, a lot of fun. So, four out of five stars. Alright everybody, so that that was my wrap up part two for January 2021. Part one will be down below. Part three will be down below whenever it's uploaded in the next couple of days. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!